Hey guys, welcome to another session of RBTL or reading between the lines. For those of you who left a comment on my previous RBTL, which is actually talking about the Solitaria Dilibet patch note, you were saying like, oh, we love it or whatever. I don't remember saying that I wasn't going to do it anymore. I'm not quite sure, but regardless, I do appreciate the feedback. I appreciate the encouraging words. Um, those who have left those messages, I was like, okay, all right, these guys, kind of care about what I think sometimes. <laughs> so let's continue. But this one is definitely a bigger patch that I wanted to talk about. Um, so it, it was like the comments were definitely encouraging. It's not exactly for the comments, but uh, you know, I won't promise that I'll still cover every patch note, especially those are underwhelming. This one's a big one. So I definitely want to touch upon it. There's a lot to talk about. We got a collab announcement with a new hero. Uh, we got the uh, RB skin, we got the Ancient Inheritance, which is the new guild war or guild content. Um, just a lot of stuff to go through today, so I definitely wanted to make a video. Um, balance adjustment, oh yeah, so so this is definitely coming after the patch. So this is uh, a patch note right before the maintenance. We got the Selene, I think Selene will have to be built now for World Arena. Um, she's going to be much more useful. Uh, now paired with a double pick politis on those who uh, love abusing non-attack skills. Everything else, I mean Solitaria, Dilibet, all my thoughts on those heroes are in my thoughts video um, f when we got the preview. So I'm not going to talk about that here because that's a, that, was a, that was a lot. That was a long video. I think it was like a 45 minute or 50 minute video. So I don't want to spend that much time on this RBTL. Mystic Summon revamp. So we know that this was coming uh, all due to the Angel of Light Angelica overpoweredness, I believe. Um, that set like a ripple effect in how people would just... I mean, some people already, already really wanted those 4-star MLs, but I think until it was Angel of Light that it was just like, you know, she's as good as an ML5. And I think, I think like with the community feedback, with how the devs saw her performance in places like World Arena, other PvP content, it's just like, uh oh, we made a mistake. Like we saw that because they designed so many counters and ML Cowric, etc. to counter the issue that they brought up with the overpowered four star ML. Um, and so I think that this system, you know, is is in light of those things and not just the community outrage or whatnot or salty players but it was like it was a both both and right so the players felt the overpoweredness the devs saw the overpoweredness and and therefore now this is an option um so the ui is a bit revamped and uh and, and i think that this will be previewed here in terms of like what the next ml5 is and it'll be arbiter villager which makes sense because the rb skin which i also talk about in this video but for bad cat armin and hua young I won't be talking about that here. I'll be talking about that in their own initial thoughts video as I usually do. I prefer just being able to concentrate on each individual hero. That way I'm not biased by everything else that's happening around, hopefully. Um, so yeah, so you get to select uh, a couple things to note and I think this is pretty important. Um, so 200 summon uh, for the pity of ML5, which is remains the same and about uh, half that for a four star ML. Um, this is important. These are important notes. Is every time a player performs summons, it will decrease uh, decrease from that group by one summon, and the count of the other group will remain unchanged. So, for example, if you have ML, like if you have an ML five selected, it's not going to lower the pity of the four star. Um, so, like it's until you click the four star one, it, it will start counting toward it. So, it's just so that's something to note. And then when a player summons a desired hero, the summon count on the selected group will reset, which makes sense. So again, if you let's say you picked four star Bad Cat Armin, you 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 have her selected, and you get her, this group will reset so that it doesn't carry over to the next four star banner, right? Um, so this system is good. It's very very generous um, because you get to basically, uh, well I guess like lower the or heighten the probability of you getting the four star uh, ml or the five star ml and it doesn't actually like reset so that's a, that's a really really good thing um so really it's like two individual banners but they, they also have sh like they their rates are also within the same banner if you know what i mean so you could select uh ml5 and you can still pull the four star just like you could do right now which doesn't change anything right everybody's happy but you could do that same thing for the four star as well um, so that if you if you selected the four star in the group, it won't reset, right? So it just depends 
if it is a like a five star or four star you want or whatever you know you could strategize for the best min max efficiency for the next upcoming mystic rotation you know uh, when players summon the Moonlight Hero while the group is not selected, the summon count will remain. With the group will will uh, will not reset. Sorry, that that text scrolled over. Not reset. So that's basically exactly what I was saying. So I think that's really really cool. Um, it definitely was needed. I am sad that they didn't apply it during Angel of Light because it would have been good to have her. <laughs> but uh, I won't complain. I think Bad Cat Armin. You know, before I get into her like initial thoughts video, in summary, I think she looks pretty interesting um, and actually pretty good with four stars. So I'll I'll talk about that again, like I said in my own video, uh, the separate video rather. Uh, Mystic packs, and I'm not gonna talk about that. So ancient inheritance. So this is the this is the the big portion. Um, they actually made a really good video. I definitely recommend you watching it. Um, it's well edited. It's also well like designed, and we got the uh, I forgot what's his what's his name Navi like acting it out i thought it was a like i thought it was a 3d set because it was like 3d tracked and all that and then and i thought it was a real set because it was tracked so well but then the shadows didn't really make sense and i'm just like whoa this is actually really interesting like it's an immersive way to tell you how to play the game instead of just keep showing you screenshots and a voiceover um so yeah i i, I think that they they definitely put in a, a bit more effort then we may have, you know, doubted them on in terms of like, we've been waiting for this for a while, right? Um, I think originally they were saying that, oh yeah, like it's like beginning of February or something like that. But don't quote me on that. They may have not said that. Um, but it felt like we were waiting forever for this. So this is for the year. This is the only big content that we know of outside of, I think, ex uh, Expedition. Um... Are we getting Expedition 4? I think we might be. Yeah, I think I think outside of that, I think those two are the two big things in this year in terms of playable content. We're not talking about new characters or whatnot. All right, so Ancient Inheritance, it will be a two week ordeal, all right? So it's the it's a season based on, it will be open for two weeks. Now, I don't know what the seasons mean at the moment. Like we have no pattern and I don't think they've really talked about the pattern of the seasons, like as the season of Guild War Reset, or is this within its own kind of seasonal thing? Um, is it going to be monthly? Is it going to be, you know, bi-monthly? Or, you know, one, once every two months, rather? Um, you know, like, it, we don't know yet, and I think that's kind of like the advent side story at the moment. It's like, they will give it to us when they want, for now, until they... I guess they're, like, kind of done with it, like... <clears throat> What I can imagine is that, like, for the next guild inheritance, or ancient inheritance rather, they might have to, like, redesign some bosses and stuff like that. So I think that they're giving themselves some buffer room in case they need to deliver on some kind of, like, newer content within the ancient inheritance itself. I kind of saw that with the uh, automaton tower where they kept on giving us new devices and then after a while they're just like okay guys it's three seasons of devices and then they just rotate it because they're pretty much done with it that was like kind of like the sign is like oh yeah we're done with the automaton tower at least for quite a while so ancient inheritance might be looking like that so it would feel like automaton tower when the seasons reset you know we got new devices and then there wasn't any pattern and then now we have a pattern because they're done with that content. So Ancient Inheritance is at the beginning, the birth stages so right now. So um, we just enjoy it as we are, you know, as, as it's coming. Because I think, <clears throat> if anything, those who are kind of like either burnt out of, from Epic 7 or feel like Epic 7 is a bit stale, or even playing some new games, which are definitely competing for the attention that Epic 7 wants, um, this might be the thing that would bring players back at least to, you know, play Epic 7 a bit more, right? Um, like we always, we always have World Arena and stuff like that, which is like unlimited entry and we have our weekly Guild Wars, which is, which is fun, but then it could be stale. Um, this could, it's just, this is just something new. This is what I personally was hoping for in terms of like content. And unfortunately it doesn't feel like it's going to be a weekly thing. But that might be a good thing as well. Time gating things will allow us to, you know, look forward to it. Um, yeah. Anyways, so exploration provisions. Um, so there's a couple things. Uh, I think these are the three main currencies which are important. This will be like 
how you're how you move in the game moving interacting with objects and commencing in battles um i do believe you can also get it um so the dailies will reset it it's not regenerated based on time like like energy regular energy uh, i think uh regenerated daily according to the player's exploration level acquisition um did i read somewhere that you can also acquire it by killing something not all the time but anyways i might have been wrong about that but regardless um it's a it's a definitely a time gated thing even though it's a within a two week span so you really want to max min max it and do this every day um you will want to use all of your provisions this sort of uh, may well i'm gonna say the uh, maze tile based kind of formula thing is not too strange in terms of like it's in a lot of other games like i've I played a lot of other mobile games that have similar systems to this and it's pretty much the same thing um I'm, and that's, that's not putting the, the ancient inheritance down i'm just saying that it is a relatively familiar type of gameplay uh vestiges and distant past yeah so this is your your currency for actually exchanging uh in the shop which we'll talk about the items it's pretty good so i definitely think that um no matter how you feel about epic 7 you got to do it if you're still going to be invested into the game right um it can be uh enhance the overall performance of a class obtainable increasing exploration level uh, we'll talk about that once we get there. So tutorial is when you start, it'll give you a tutorial and you will give you the areas where you can look at the help. Again, I would say that the video really helped me understand it because it was like edited in a way that was like easily digestible. So um, everything else is written here is in the video. I definitely do recommend it. Just please don't rely on me in terms of like, my show is called Reading Between the Lines, but everyone makes fun of me that Jagan doesn't even read. If you come to my streams and you know how I play games, I hardly read and I fail a lot because I don't. Um, for this one, I did try to read <laughs> and I also watched the video just so I don't give like false information. But I think more or less, it is a pretty simple type of game mechanic. Um, again, you have those provisions that limit your movement and you have things that you can interact with or move on the tile. Really what it is, is you want to basically find what they call the warden. Um, so I'll, I'll jump ahead a bit and you want to you want to be able to eliminate the warden and there could be more than one warden. Um, right on the screen there it only says one out of one. Once you kill it, you have to kill the priest which is kind of like the boss for that stage. And then you move on to the next zone, up to four zones, and then that's it. So within the amount of provision that you have daily reset, um, unless you regenerate it in another way, daily reset with your guildmates, you're basically moving along those tiles, gathering stuff, strengthening up, killing stuff on the way, if you want to use a provision, and then basically finding the warden. All right, so let me go back. Um, so I mean, we'll, we'll go from the beginning here. So yeah, so we have the multiple icons there. We got the normal monsters, we got elite monsters, we got the wardens, which again are the are the targets to kill before the boss. Um, we got objects and we got the teleportation megalith. I don't know what that is. I think that is only the, I don't think they talked about that. I'm not sure, but anyway, though that's your legend. Um, and then when you enlist the characters, you kind of want to like, enlist a whole bunch of them i would i would assume like like you, you want to strategize what type of classes you want you probably want a healer you probably want a tank you want a couple dps and stuff like that um players must be enlisting their heroes the heroes that are not enlisted cannot be part of the team so you just got to make sure that you do enlist it when you you know when you start uh, enlisted heroes will all be normalized so that they all be six star fully awakened and all skills are plus 15 which is good because this will expand um like even for newer players playing this this will be able to allow them to have have fun with the inheritance and it's mainly will be locked to your strategy right so uh the effects of the artifacts and equipment set equipped to heroes will remain uh, we may unchanged, but the equipment stats will be changed. So that is good to know. So again, stats are normalized, but the sets are are important. Um, so that like counter sets, life steal sets, those sets will definitely be very very important. I do believe that speed set should count here, even though it says that the st equipment stats will be changed. Um, I do believe that speed sets should have that extra twenty five percent. Hopefully, if they don't, then you probably 
probably want to do more lifesteal uh, counter that kind of stuff so sets that give you like different abilities of course injury set won't really help there revenge set I suppose could be useful um, pen set etc etc immunity probably not needed um, but that's just something good to know in terms of like let's say like I have like a five star shoe all right and like maybe I want to use her for guild inheritance or ancient inheritance so I would gear her with some counter set or something give her something that's so she's usable when I use her in lister she's six star awakened and she's plus 15 and then she's usable right and then maybe slap on an artifact so that's important to know I guess the artifact is needed uh, identical hero and greeting hero will not be fully unlocked by the moonlight blessing Could they, these guys cannot be enli enlisted that makes sense um, if you have not enlisted all possible heroes, you cannot participate in battles until heroes incapable of fighting are reset. Enlisted heroes cannot be transmitted as materials or used as materials, nor they can be recalled or sent to the waiting room. So that's, I guess that's a more of a, like an organizational thing to know. Um, do you guys remember back in the day, I forgot what content it was. Like, I, like when you wanted to recall a hero, like a four star green Pergus or something and you want to recall it's like oh this guy's in your party this he's out in a like expedition team and all that stuff and you have to like remove it that was kind of annoying so I think this is just to prevent that even it's just like you can't do anything just make sure if you've enlisted them you just don't want to be able to transmit them and, and whatnot and send to the waiting room I, I don't think you would but it's just something to know um, enlistment withdrawal, players can withdraw heroes in enlistment, withdraw up to 8 heroes on the enlistment screen, and then withdrawing heroes does not cost players, in terms of like, it doesn't cost you anything, um, I think that's what it's trying to say. Uh, relics are exclusive buffs, uh, and grant you benefits such, um, such as exploration, uh, and then uh, can replace relics obtained during exploration, however, starting relics cannot be replaced. So if you can see on screen there, there's a bit of like, a bit of the preview. Uh, hold on, my screen is actually really scuffed here. Uh, but basically, more exploration experience acquired. Um, these are probably examples though, so they're probably not going to be uh, like for every one of the relics. But I, I suppose that you basically want to, uh, you know, you you obviously want them, right? Because like it's it, at least based on this screenshot, it is uh, increasing your exploration experience. So every single. Uh, provision item that you use you're getting more out of it which is again one of those min max things you want to do as fast as possible uh, objects uh, there are usage of the personal objects uh, and there's shared objects and then there's benefit uh, benefit uh, contain rewards like chess and the grand player event buffs relics etc um, I think these are just the categories of those objects uh, and on here, it does say that uh, the Statue of Recovery just gives you uh, an idea of what a shared object is. Um, so number of use, guild uses three times left. So uh, Mystic Power blah, 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 Recover Hero who have become incapable of fighting. So three times, this is a shared object. So all guilds will, all guild members will be locked at that three times. So I think that it, there's going to be, um, uh, unless your guild is, there's no communication at all. You would have to kind of strategize, especially if you're struggling. If you're not struggling, I don't think you need to care as much. I mean, everybody will be like, you know, it's like Guild War, right? If everybody's really strong, you don't need to communicate. You just know that they will probably do well. If they don't do well, then you probably have a talk or something. I don't know. Starting point. So each zone has two to four starting points and then guild members will be able to start at a random starting point at the beginning. You'll be surrounded by dark fog. So this is what I was talking about. So you really don't know which way that warden is the, the objective is on the top right of the screen it says you see there eliminate warden There's, this is one uh so you don't know where it is so everybody's gonna kind of have to like branch out because the entire guild benefits from the warden being killed so that they kill the boss early and then they can get to the next floor etc so it'll probably be like okay i you, you go into the game if you don't even communicate you see a couple players on your top left or maybe to your to your right or something and you walk the opposite way maybe you go bottom left or something like that in order to um what do you call it like spread out right to get get to uh to open up the map or reveal the map as quick as possible um let's see here a view that lights up the regions where you have passed, it is the brightest view. The area that have been revealed will remain lit. Guild view, a view that lights up the... Uh, it's okay, I'm not going to read it. 
<laughs> not reading between the lines. Uh, regions are not explored. Yeah, it, it, you know what? I don't need to read every single thing. It's it's self-explanatory, right? That's my excuse. Um, so yes, so the objectives will be in this this basically this sort of formula unless they change it in other seasons of it. But again, pretty familiar, pretty easy to understand. Uh, movement exploration. So yeah, so your exploration privilege will be acquired through interaction with certain objects will be recharged on daily reset. Yeah, so yeah, there's there you go. It says it here. So I was talking about this before. It could acquire through certain interactions with certain objects, right? So it's most likely like, you know, you could probably get some provisions in a chest or something like that. That's my assumption. Um, yeah, other than that, it will be consumed every um, action and then it will be recharged on daily reset. So that will be always the case, but you could probably gain one or two. But it honestly, in these kind of type of game modes, they don't usually add up too much. Like you're never going to be in a surplus you'll just maybe be extending your play you're never gonna actually be banking like you know three provision items or one it's not going to happen you can see on the screen there's about 150 provision items um a previewed um i don't know if that is based on because i think i think your inheritance level or whatever once it goes higher you can get more so i don't think it starts off at 150 but we'll we'll see uh, so after defeating all wardens in, uh, in the objective zone, players will be able to fight the bo boss monster, and then the teleportation megalith will become active. Um, so yeah, uh, battle, normal monsters you defeat on your own, uh, elite, warden, and boss monsters, we can work together to fight, all heroes who participate in the battle. All heroes who have participated in the battle will become incapable of fighting for the rest of the day. So, so you gotta. So, so this is one thing. You enlisted a couple heroes, so you gotta make sure you are not using them all too quick so based on this otherwise the rest of the day you can't use them um here's keep up in fighting uh will be used again upon daily, daily reset or i think you can go to that healing thing this uh cover those who will be incapable of fighting so i think you can technically use it to like revitalize them and then you can fight a bit more so i believe that's how it works Players can check damage contributions. Yeah, that's cool. We can need normal monsters. Individual battle content will play a lot of exploration experience, which each, each successive battle, the heart-shaped health points of the monster will decrease. If the battles are too difficult, you can weaken the monsters by using exploration provisions on the battle preparation screen, which I probably wouldn't suggest. Um, that's kind of like using stigma for automaton tower. So I wouldn't suggest that uh, for newer Oh, sure. For especially for end game players, of course, like that won't be necessary. But I mean, maybe newer players just be be careful of that. It looks like on this screen, the preview is five provision items to even start the battle. Um, I think it's one provision item for a mo one movement. So you got to be careful of how you're using your provision items and plan on how to get from point A to point B. So like maybe there's like a chest, like in like kind of like out of the way, but kind of in in between like an important fight. So you maybe you want to risk a couple provision items to be able to open up that chest. Maybe you get an, another one, right? So like, you'll 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 feel it out once you start playing it. But it's usually like this kind of like maybe there's some min max strategy to how you're moving, um, especially based on the targets or objects that you see. So that's those are those are things you'll pick up pick up along the way. If you feel defeat the, if you fail to defeat the monster, only the provision a portion of the exploration provision will be consumed, and the heroes will. Uh, heroes will not become uh, capable of fighting. So let's say you went with this fire team, you lose. Maybe you lose half of the provision items. You don't get to use. You don't use all five, but you still lose some. So in the end of the day, you probably don't want to risk dying. Um, but at least the heroes are not incapable of fighting. You still have those maintaining your roster. So that's something important to know. Um, elite monsters. Yeah, join with your guild members. Oh yeah, okay. So this this is kind of uh, they're, they're talking about the rewards, and I was reading it. I was like, mm, not quite sure how I feel about it, but I think it's okay. Uh, elite monsters, uh, elite monsters. It's co-op. Kill with guild members. Uh, guild members will gain participant rewards every time you participate. So it seems that participation is required. Guild members can claim clear rewards through reward notice once the elite monster is defeated. So it seems that the elite monsters has to be participate participation. Um, when uh, there are two. Uh, okay, I'll continue first, and I'll talk about that. 
there are two to four wardens in each for each zone. So the the preview that we see in the screenshot, there's only like one warden. So this says there's two to four for each zone, right? So but anyways, it can be confirmed via the objective. So at the top right of the screen, uh, after defeating the wardens, teleportation megalith will become active, and the player will be able to uh, battle the boss monster. Only the guild members who have participated in the battle will be able to claim the rewards through the notice. So the guild members who have participated. So I mean, I'm all for like you know having that kind of like okay guys let's do it together there's more incentive that other players have to do it but then what about the people who work and play epic 7 as a casual but they still want the rewards right so like the thing is like guild war is like you can tactically hit it any time of the day and, and it probably won't cost you too much i don't know how this will compound but i you know i'm not i'm not i'm not here to be like you know I, you have to pick on everything i just it's just something that stood out to me that's all like players then won't be able to do let's say you you share uh, a guild with people around the world and the people who are um, awake during the reset time or whenever the, the daily resets they'll be able to hit it first right so like is the reward cost going to be a big difference hopefully it's not hopefully it's not um just in case but uh, other than that, it does drive more incentive for the the players to actually do this content because if it is decent rewards or even if it's just a little bit reward over something that's just, you know, if you're not participating in it versus you participate in it, then players usually opt to participate in it. So it is an important driving force in getting this game mode kind of rolling. So maybe they'll address that in the future. It just depends on what it is, all right? So guild members who have not participated in Ancient Inheritance before defeating a boss monster cannot receive the rewards. Okay, I don't like how this is kind of like always scrolling. Technically, it doesn't need to because I see all the words. But anyways, um, so yeah, so that's just something to keep in mind. But the boss battles are different. So boss battles, once one of the defeated players will be able to battle them, unlike other monsters, they use the uh, skills that are set depending on the specific turn orders. So if you didn't see what that looks like, if they don't have a preview here, um, definitely check the video out. Um, at the end of the boss's rotation, you get the extinction for your entire team, like one shot. So basically, you want to be able to kind of look at their skills and and kind of plan your your best attacks during certain like of the boss's skills that is so like maybe he has a like a, an in, invulnerability state um a, or an immunity buff on one of the turns and you want to get a defense breakdown before he does it stuff like that you just have to plan it out and of course this will be done with the guilds which is great um, it is important to remember the skill effects and prepare for the bosses uh, before the boss takes the next turn and then clear rewards are given to all guild members my noise regardless of participation so the very fact that they had to make this a separate thing um, it means that yes these rewards you have to participate these rewards you don't have to participate you can all get it it's collectively um, so I mean it's most likely like the best rewards are going to be from here because it doesn't take the participation it's more of just like if anybody's if everybody's in the guild they'll get it um growth the players acquire explosion experience by exploring the guild and uh, i call it guild inheritance a lot ancient inheritance to increase the exploration level so when you increase this the number of heroes oh yes so you increase the number of heroes you can list and then also the provisions will increase as well more relics that can be equipped as well so of course you become stronger as you do this but again if this isn't within a two week time span so it's not like you know you will be like super op on the next one um when the next one starts everything will be reset that's my assumption um so the the exploration level will be definitely within the two weeks itself all right so you're gaining the levels within the two weeks uh, players can acquire class enhancement ingredients each time they level up and then here we go so the class level enhancement uh, this basically just gives you actual stats to those characters uh, based on the class right so you just kind of want to know I, I guess I guess you want to prep like what you know what heroes or what classes you want you want to kind of probably funnel it right so like maybe all your DPS are gonna be thief and you got some knights and you got some soul weavers that way you're not really spreading yourself thin or all warriors or whatnot um players this is such a, yeah. among six classes enhancing the 
class will improve the performance and list of the heroes of that class and then the max level could be level 15 and and it cannot exceed the exploration level okay so that's good to know as well um, as the class levels the uh, required amount of class enhancement ingredients will also increase uh, and then uh, so yeah so it will probably it's probably not going to be that good in terms of like funneling it onto one then i guess it would just be like you kind of want to spread out class level that has been enhanced cannot be reset very interesting spacing but that doesn't matter you don't really need to reset but i guess you just need to know what classes you want to commit to during that two week run right uh clearing zones if you successfully defeat the boss the portal to the next zone and they will be able to build new new boss technically you do the same thing like i said rinse and repeat four times i do believe that get they get harder i believe so players will proceed to the next zone will not be able to come back to the current zone so make sure you finish everything you want to do on the current zone in order to proceed to the next one guild members will start at a random starting point in the next zone defeating the boss in the east zone will leave a time record on the ranking board actually i don't know maybe it isn't stronger oh it is right here um a stronger boss will appear in the same location the ranking board is kind of cool kind of like a flex thing top five guild records will be saved to the ranking board and then if you just check the ranking board everybody gets the sky stone so i believe if it's top five there's about 100 sky stone out of this so 100 sky stone for a two week event which you also get other stuff out of it not bad right it's kind of like a, the cherry on top uh, instant rewards so you get experience exploration experience you get some gold and then you get those um are they, are they shards i forgot anyways the currency for the coins uh, for the shop so normal normal object players discover what defeat normal monsters and here's will be awarded players immediately elite monsters cooperative content you want to join forces participant rewards will be given right after each battle so again you want to participate that in order to maximize I suppose maximize your currency and the stuff that you can get uh then we got the history i won't talk about that i don't think it's needed the equipment set is great by the way it is a speed set 88 um does remind me kind of like the abyss set i guess but uh in terms of that these are 88s not like the arena 88s which are technically not 88s these are the actual 88s these are the abyss 88s the hell raid 88s so the starting stats start at nine percent and five speed which means that the maximum roll or you could possibly get five speed roll which you could technically already do but it should be a higher rate because it starts at five speed five speed nine health nine uh these are pretty good um i would say like you'll probably use them they have a lot of mixed effectiveness which is one thing that i don't like about it that's the only issue the anklet which is interesting boot um it, it is a health set so and it has effectiveness has effect resistance has defense and it has health i mean that's pretty usable for some kind of soul weaver i think and then the uh, uh everything's health everything's health um so hopefully, hopefully, I mean, if you guys are rolling these, you roll like, you know, quad, quad speed, penta speed rolls. Oh, uh, and then you got a really, really, really nice and spicy set, right? Also, you get a uh, greater modification gem selection chest. So not only can you select the, um, the stat that you want, you can also select the set, right? So this is the this is the the pinnacle of the modification ch chest that we have the modification gem chest that we have in the game at the moment. You get some Molagora there previewed, and then some Covenant bookmarks. I'm assuming the typical stuff like charms, artifact charms, and stuff like that will be on the bottom. But I think those will probably be the most important things. Anyways, so that's a long talk. Um, Ancient inheritance overall, it is something that I was looking forward to. I did i did feel like i needed some other content i also in case the devs are ever watching these videos please 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 teleportation in regular raid like i still do my regular raid i don't miss my regular raids but i hate walking teleportation in regular raids that would be great especially you could you could say like rank 70 or above or rex rank 70 or in the, in the future above rank 70 and you get to teleport or something like that if you're worried about people players not interacting with the game enough right so please for end gamers allow us to teleport and raid that's all i have to say about that uh epic pass the vivian skin you know what i given a lot of crap about skins and i was like oh man skin's not worth it and i wish vivian was 
like really really good for pvp still but i want to get the skin i actually want to get the skin um so i think i will all right i'm just gonna say that right now I, i'm not even gonna care about what's in the epic pass i think for this skin i think i probably will or or i just be cheap and i do have skin tickets laying around so maybe maybe i buy the skin but so far i haven't bought a skin in a very very long time uh seven sweethearts i don't want to talk about this 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 event actually depresses me it actually depresses me uh return of vivian so, so i guess it's for the skin really uh indignous orb and in the syria song of stars drop rate up um maybe summer time of syria i don't think you need to honestly i think if you have summer time of syria and you like her and you don't have a max artifact like me you probably just want to wait for the banner so i think i'm gonna wait for the banner i wouldn't be pulling this for the summertime assyria imprints uh let's see here anything else katie's equipment will be added to the secret shop oh that's good actually i didn't know that i didn't know it wasn't in the shop but that's that's in there okay so i think that's pretty much it so uh we had also this uh, yeah game of princes uh this preview the the video is actually out i mean everybody's asking when anime um, I want to talk about the skin and I want to talk about the last thing, the collab. Um, Dark Monarch Arbiter Vildred. It looks really good. I like this skin a lot. Like, I think it is our first Husbando skin for uh, ML5, um, but I think they did really well on this skin. It, I guess they couldn't have gotten any more edgier. <laughs> I thought they couldn't have with Arbiter Vildred, but now at least he's not wearing white, and he has freaking demon horns, and he's all in black. Like, and also, for those who watch Spider-Man, that chest, like, it just reminds me of, like, the symbiote suit for Spider-Man, um, like, the Venom symbiote suit. So, so like, it looks like, it, like, from all different aspects, it looks like the just the right amount of edginess. And I think like the voice lines were pretty good too. Uh, I'm not gonna play it here, but it was like really, really edgy. So I, I actually got to hit RTA in this next week in order to get the skin because I actually, I actually think this skin is good. I would actually use the skin for sure. So collab, Guilty Gear again. <laughs> so now, no, no, no. The thing was like I was looking at this. I'm like, oh frick. Originally I was like, oh Guilty Gear probably not that's probably why there's no hype right but then i saw it's a guilty gear strive so the amazing collaboration is back coming soon so originally i was looking at everything i was like oh it's guilty gear the same characters and then it was like amazing collab coming back coming soon and it's kind of like a meme at this point right like we're, we're kind of sick of it but but then i open up this page and it's like this who's the new five star limited guilty gear strive collaboration hero making an appearance during this collaboration coming soon and i'm like okay all right fine you got my attention and i and i assume that it has to be the case like every single collab return they gotta add at least one more hero to spice things up otherwise you're gonna get last year's guilty gear collab which was just there was no hype involved i think they did an elf balancing patch and a soul bad guy like for that specific event and it was like, okay, cool. I mean, we saw Elf Elf use, and I myself used Elf Elf for a couple of the, a couple of my RTA fights and like some offensive arena, and I think even Guild War. And then that was it. And then like I don't see Elf Elf much anymore. And so that now this collab is coming. I I I feel like they could have. Remember when they did the first Guilty Gear collab, guys? And they had that animated video like they do for big events and i was like well that was really cool we saw the k-ron we saw the tenebria we saw dizzy we saw i don't know if we saw biking in that but i think soul bad guy we did but anyways it was like it was pretty hype right you got you got to see small gates like animation abilities um and then mixed with guilty gear and saw all that coming together and just like well that was really hype and then the the following years it was just like all new heroes but then it was like the event itself was really boring and then last year was just a sad one it's just farm for portrait that was it right so like are we gonna see a bit more in terms of the event i'm not quite sure i don't know if one hero is enough but hopefully that hero is gonna be just really bonkers and at least i'm saving my bookmarks for something important right 
So anyways, I wasn't expecting Guilty Gear to be back. I, I honestly just, I forgot about it. Um, but uh, I'm excited about that. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below of anything that I've covered. The Ancient Inheritance, are you excited about that? Is that gonna, you know, give you more incentive to play Epic 7, to continue if you feel that Epic 7 has gone stale, right? If you never felt that it's gone stale, then, you know, double thumbs up. Uh, and then the Guilty Gear Strive collab, right? Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna end this with the RBTL here. If you guys have Discord, check out the Discord server. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe to YouTube if you haven't. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.